Installing solar energy can be one of those tricky things lately. Maybe you've been interested and you've heard it can eliminate your energy bills. You see neighbors installing it on the roof and maybe you don't know exactly what to believe with all the people knocking on your door trying to sell it to you. But solar can be great at the same time and it's a key solution if we're all going to try to become more green and that includes saving your green dollars on the energy bill. In this video, I'll tell the story of my first net zero solar home renovation project where I added solar and combined energy efficiency to power the whole house and the electric car 100%. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and tricks to design correctly, keep the price down, and help you get educated. I'll go over all the costs and production numbers towards the end as well. Now, this is a big topic, but my goal is to show you that it's completely possible to do this more simply and have it done right. My name is Aaron Shine, and I'm the founder of Attainable Home, where we use affordable real estate and practical sustainability to build your wealth and well-being. So let's get started. A few years ago, I set out to prove that you could have it all, a newly renovated home that was completely net zero, all for at or under the median average home price of the area. Net zero means that you produce as much power as you use, and that's from renewable sources as well. Solar energy is a key component of this because it's most likely the best way to produce renewable energy for your own home at your location. And as we get more into the details here, just a little background on myself. I used to be a solar sales consultant here in Denver, Colorado, and I've been helping people with their own solar for years. So I've got a little bit of experience, but the project can still be daunting every time you do it. In the planning stages while looking for a good house to try this net zero experiment on, I looked for a few key things. A south-facing roof, or at least some kind of roof with southern exposure, this is if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. A roof free of trees, shading, or other buildings in the way on the south side is another one. A roof clear of tons of roof penetrations like vents and chimneys, so you can have a nice looking system without all the panels broken up. And the actual pitch of the roof should ideally be angled south or at least some direction south so you can catch the winter and the summer sun. These are just some of the things you might wanna look for when installing solar. A good system aimed somewhat south means that your ROI will be higher, your payback can be lower, and the overall financial picture looks a little bit better. Now you can put solar on the east and west facing roofs without issue. You'll just need a slightly bigger system. Because this was my first time doing a full net zero project, including powering the car, I wanted to make sure I had the highest production potential possible and a lot of extra roof space in case I needed it. I actually used Zillow and Google Earth aerial views of the houses I was looking at for sale to check before I even saw them in person. This eliminated dozens of houses from the start because you could see shading and the roof lines and other things that would eliminate them from a good solar install. The goal again was to have the regular real estate investing numbers work, but also have the net zero numbers work. So we had to keep this whole thing as cheap as possible. The house I chose was basically perfect for solar. It had no shading, a huge direct south facing roof, and it was a new roof that was only a year old put on by the seller and it had upgraded hurricane shingles and that was key in South Florida there. One important thing to mention is that you usually want to do solar absolutely last, especially when you're doing a lot of other projects or energy efficiency work. And I'll mention some of the reasons why I mentioned that. You may be needing or wanting a new roof as part of your project. Solar generally should not go on an older roof. It can cost you thousands just to pay somebody or a company to remove them from the racking system and reinstall. Quotes I see regularly are anywhere from two to $400 per panel to take them off and put them back on after a re-roof. So you may just wanna do a new roof while you're at it or wait on solar until you do a new roof. In the case of my house here, it would have cost near $5,000 to do that if there was not a new roof because there were 24 panels put up. Another reason is that in most cases, a lot of the energy efficiency work will be much cheaper and a better bang for your buck than going solar. So you wanna do this to get your bill down as much as possible first, and then fill the rest in with solar if the goal is to get your bill to zero or go net zero. By doing energy efficiency first, you can literally save thousands or tens of thousands on the size of the solar system you need because you just don't need to produce that much power. You can also do solar last because it doesn't really interfere with other projects. The installers are outside on the roof. So unless you're doing other roofing projects, this can be out of the way from everything else you're doing. All projects are different and this is generally just what I found with doing solar last. It's worked out pretty well. 
We had one bathroom vent in the way, so I paid someone for a few hours to move that vent and patch up the roof. So moving on to getting quotes, this is a tricky one. The search algorithms figured out that I was researching and probably getting ready for solar, so I was getting bombarded by marketing and solar company ads. Given that I know the industry a bit, I was looking for a few key things with the quotes and companies. How long have they been in business? I was looking for great reviews going back many years. Do they have a good general vibe and tone with their marketing and staff. I wanted to be a good fit with myself and the project. I wanted to find a company that had a general interest in my project, solar and the environment in general, not just a contractor looking to make as much money as possible and move on. I've been in sustainability my whole career, and this is a key differentiator that I've noticed in the green space through the years here. And then lastly, and really important, would they be willing to work with me on price? And while I don't know everything about the solar industry, I do know that there's a multi-million dollar industry set up for generating solar leads through marketing companies and other things. They gather the leads, they sell them at a really high price to local solar companies, and then we end up paying a lot more for the system. By me contacting solar companies directly and already knowing my general design, they don't have to pay anyone else for leads and spend a lot of time on the design or sales process with me. All of this keeps the price down. By doing a bit of homework yourself, you can really save a lot with these companies. So I would recommend that you find a good company locally and then contact them directly. Try to resist using lead magnets and general solar websites to quote your system because it can really save the solar company money, which ultimately saves you money on the system costs in the end. So for my project, after all the local company research, I found a great company in town who's been in business since 2003. They came over, we agreed on the system size, and they gave me a really good feeling overall. They also offered some great components to use. We use really high quality 385 watt mission solar, all black panels with high pressure ratings for the hurricanes, along with Enphase IQ7 Plus microinverters. There are a ton of advantages to using microinverters over the single central inverter systems, and I'll cover those in future videos. I'll also cover the costs and production numbers at the end of this video, so hang on for that. So once we settled on everything, I put 25% down to start the project, and they started ordering parts and submitting the engineering to the city or county permitting office. Install day was a lot of fun. We had a lot of people working on site doing all sorts of projects, but again, solar's nice because they're kind of out of the way working on the roof. A good solar install team can install it in a day or two so it doesn't drag on forever. You can see here that they measure out the roof and where to install the racking system and the mounts. Next you put the racking system together and then all the panels go on. The electrical lines all get connected together. Next to the meter you install a combiner box and other things and after a week or so someone from the utility company came out to swap out the old analog meter to a new digital net meter which allows them to track the solar that you're producing and sending back into the grid and it literally spins your meter backwards. This happens when you produce more power than you're using at any given moment and you'll get a credit from them when you do. How much you get and how exactly it works is dependent on things like your location, the local laws, the utility company rates, and other factors. It just depends. In my case, I got a one-for-one -one credit for each kilowatt hour produced at retail rates, so it really helped the numbers in the ROI. There were a few snags along the way that had to be worked out. One issue that came up was the solar company got confused with their own design internally stopped work and tried to charge me for more electrical equipment and parts. In the end, we got going again quickly because I had records of their original proposal and design. I showed them my records and they started up again. They ate whatever costs they didn't factor in internally with their own company. So a quick tip for you, whether a company is organized or honest themselves, just keep records and organized yourself and it'll pay off and keep the project on track and ultimately your price down. The second snag was, well, an installer was climbing through the attic to run the electrical lines, he didn't have a solid footing and fell through the master bedroom ceiling. Luckily, my drywaller was on site to patch it up. The solar company paid him $800 to do this and the fix was pretty quick. We got back on track pretty quickly, but I kind of lucked out on that one. The last issue was a bit maddening because we had to wait an extra two to three weeks before we could turn the system on. Solar has to stay on while it's being inspected by the county or city and the inspector failed it because the wrong sticker was stuck on the box outside. So the solar company had to make a special trip just to switch the stickers out and then get the inspector back out. And that took weeks. So that's pretty crazy. This sticker issue actually happened a second time in the second house I did in St. Pete, Florida, and it delayed it another few weeks. And this whole sticker thing is completely ridiculous.
us. But with anything that comes up, you just power through it and finally the solar system was on. Once the system was on, there's no maintenance with it and it's like it's not even there. This system has now been installed for three years and it's been an amazing piece of this net zero puzzle. At first, after the whole project was done, I lived in there for a bit and then I turned it into a nice short-term net zero rental. And when solar gets going, your electric bills really drop. You can see here that once it was turned on, there was no more electricity bought net net from the utility company each month from that point on. That was again because I sized the system just above what I calculated the house and the car to use in one year and luckily the numbers panned out. If you look at the meter reading you can see that it actually spins backwards. The new net meter starts at the number zero but it's been spinning backwards which is why it reads 99,000 there. The meter only goes to 100,000 before rolling over. At the bottom you can see the comparison between the current month and the same month for the year prior with no solar where last year the bill was for 1618 kilowatt hours and now it's zero you'll also notice a charge for $21.69 also there oftentimes utility companies try to charge some sort of net meter or hookup fee which you can't get away from this is their way of getting at least a little bit of profit for having you hooked up to the grid but it's also probably fair if you're not using batteries like I wasn't because it didn't make sense for this project you can't really get away from this if you're looking to hook up to the grid so it's really important you find out what this cost is per month beforehand because it directly affects your ROI and payback numbers and you can see here this is a screenshot of the app that you get when the solar's on this is called M phase enlighten and this is a typical day where you can see what the home uses in power in orange and what the solar produces in blue it also tracks what you're importing and exporting to the grid your solar production by panel and it's got a lot of other fun data in it in this case you can see the sun rising and then the afternoon thunderstorms and clouds are rolling in through the afternoon as the sun starts to set later in the day. You can also see the system producing more than the home needed in a 24 hour period, which will spin the meter backwards and give you that energy credit. So let's talk numbers. This was a 9.24 kilowatt system with 24 total panels. You can see the total system cost of $21,547, which means that this came in at $2.33 per watt. Cost per watt is a standard industry term and it helps you level out the overall cost comparisons between the different quotes. So you may want to use these while talking to the solar companies and it'll show that you know what you're talking about as well. At the time there was a 26% solar tax credit which means that I get back $5,602 at the end of the year. This brings the net total cost of this system to $15,945. You can see from the initial PV watt solar design calculation that the system is estimated to produce 14,784 kilowatt hours per year. This is also what I figure the house and the car would use for the full year roughly. It'll never be exact, but you can get fairly close. Given that the utility rates were around 13 cents per kilowatt hour at the time, this shows that the system would generate $1,922 per year worth of electricity. When you subtract out the $2,169 hookup fee per month, it calculated to a net $1,661.72 per year. I also wanna quickly show you the return on investment numbers using our own solar ROI calculator that I built on the website. This is available at attainablehome.com or you can click the link below in the description. I entered all the information information above in the calculator and you can see that the simple payback on the system was about nine years when I factored the 2169 hookup fee per month. Electric rates were pretty low at the time in this part of Florida and much of the country is two, three, even four times higher than this, which linearly affects your ROI and payback numbers. So if you're in a more expensive part of the country, the numbers look a lot better, but it depends on a lot of factors. With solar, you're effectively locking in the price of electricity on day one when you flip the system on and this hedges you against future rate increases. I like to think of it as a semi-risk-free bond or annuity payment as well. The calculator also shows you your net cash position over time and your payback timeline towards the bottom. But you can see how this calculator shows the real power of what a correctly designed and affordable solar system can do for your home. The solar system has been up there for three years now and it even survived flawlessly through Hurricane Ian. It has since been turned into a net zero rental and then I sold the home for a nice profit recently. 
recently. You can check out the full story on the Net Zero Fix and Fillet project in the description below as well. I think it turned out pretty nice. It's been a good install and I even got a check back from the utility company at the end of the year for overproducing power a little bit. There's a free guide that I made that includes dozens of easy, cheap DIY energy efficiency projects that you can do around the house to lower your bills. All of these things in the guide contribute to needing a smaller and less expensive solar system. And I've included that link below in the description as well. And if you're looking for help designing your own solar system or need help figuring out which proposal or company to go to, we do offer those consultation services. So that's it. I hope you liked the video and maybe you picked up some good tips along the way for your own project that you're looking into. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.